sorry, dA. Um, yes, dA of fA is zero, so if dA, if you apply dA to this, then you get that dA star of fA equals zero. But um, the, the solutions to this are, are the BPS states. So this is a second order uh, PD, this is a first order PD. And furthermore, it minimizes the energy. So these solutions minimize <coughs> the integral of FA squared. Right, so basically anti-self-dual connections are an example of BPS states, uh, but a lot of other things that you've, you've seen in mathematics um, are BPS states, so examples include, okay, so ASD, but also Cyborg-Witten solutions, and also, if you like, symplectic geometry, then J-holomorphic curves. These are maybe the most common, but in some of the lecture series, you'll see other BPS states. It, it, they depend on the theory. Okay, I think these are, oh yes, one more thing. Uh, in physics, you also hear about, I don't know, um, something 4D n equals four or, four or 3D n equals two theories, and I wanted to say what that means. So if you have something like 4D n equals two theory, well, this is just the dimension in which the theory is. So, uh, well, it's d plus one, so this would be like a three plus one dimension. And this reflects, well, it's related to the number of superchargers. So theories can have maybe just one supersymmetry or more. And n, well, n is kind of a constant depending on the dimension times the, no, sorry. The number of supersymmetries is a constant depending on the dimension times n. Uh, well, the constant is kind of the minimal number of supersymmetries uh, in that dimension. Let me just say we have 4n uh, superchargers um, in dimension 4 and 2n in dimension 3, because these are the dimensions we care about mostly. Okay, so now I'm gonna give four examples that um, we will encounter in this lecture series of Witten type TQFTs. Okay, so next examples. Uh, so first is a, um, well it's, let's see, what's called the pure super young Mills theory. Uh, this is a 4D n equals 2 theory. And um, its topological twist, it has a topological twist. It gives some theory that includes uh, basically two things. It includes two things that mathematicians like. Donaldson theory, based on the Yang-Mills equations and Cyborg-Witten theory. These are two limits of the same theory, so Donaldson theory is kind of the high energy for small scale. So this is kind of the theory that you see at uh, small scales, and this is the one that you see at large scales or at low energy. Uh, all right, but so basically this gives you some PDEs that are um, interesting. And it, this gives you two three plus one dimensional TQFTs. And they are related, so in dimension four, for closed four manifolds, we have the cyborg witten invariants and the Donaldson invariants. 
The cyborg written invariants were the object of lecture one by Hadish. Uh, the Donaldson invariants, I guess, we haven't seen, but uh, they're based on the Yang Mills equations. And these two are related by something called Witten's conjecture. Um, there's a physical explanation for this, but uh, there's also been mathematical progress in showing that kind of if you know one of, the, one of them, then you know the other. And they're related in a slightly complicated way. Now, in dimension three, uh, you have cyborg witten or also called monopole flare homology. So n now, now you associate a vector space to a three manifold, right? Uh, and in cyborg witten theory, this is called monopole flare homology. It was Yes, there's a book by Kronheimer and Mrovka, which does, uh, which does this in great detail. And then here it's uh, Yang Mills, or um, instanton Fleur homology. And this will be the object of lecture series number, no, number eight by Tam Mrovka. By the way, I should say that these are, in principle, there should be a relation between them, but this is unknown. This is one of the big conjectures in the field. I mean, the big questions, like what is the relation between the two flower homologies? Okay, so, oh yes, so cyborg with and flower homology is actually the same as something else called hegart fleur homology. This was introduced by Oshbart and Sabo, and they're the same, so no nowadays it's known that they are equivalent. So, but this is based on gauge theory, on PDEs. And this is constructed using symplectic geometry and pseudo-holomorphic curves, basically J-holomorphic cur curves. Um, and this one is actually more computable. So that's why people like it. They like to do computations with it. It's somehow easier to work in symplectic geometry. And there is a similar, there's, a, there's also a theory for knots, knot flare homology. It's kind of Hegart flare homology, but if you have a knot in the three manifold, and this kind of stuff is gonna be covered by Jan Hum in lecture series number, number what? Number four. So this is really cyborg rhythm theory, but in disguise. Okay, so that was one example um, of Witten type TQFT. There are some more, um, TQFTs of this type, so also, so yeah, so there are some theories of class S. Uh, so these are also for dn equals two, and they're determined by some data consisting of uh, a Lie algebra, a Riemann surface with punctures, and some data at the punctures. Let me not say what it is. Um, right, but uh, an example of this is actually super young mills. When you take G equals SU2 and uh, C is P1 minus, well, with punctures at zero and infinity. And yes, you give it some data. So this is a, a generalization of uh, of this theory. Um, yes, let me say, okay, let, I'll, I'll say this. This comes from something called 6D20 super conformal field theory, um, also known as theory X or the five brain theory. This is not a topological 
field theory, but it's some quantum field theory that physicists like, and it actually gives many of the other QFTs that we've seen. So basically, this is in six dimension, and you write it on a four manifold times uh, times this curve, times this Riemann surface, and then it gives you these theories of classes. Okay, so the reason we care about these is when M4 is um, a circle times a three manifold. These class S theories uh, are described in terms of, um, they basically have to do with, uh, something to do with maps from Y to some space M, which we will encounter over and over again. This is the space of Higgs bundles on C. Yes, this is the moduli space of Higgs bundles. It's something associated to the Riemann surface. Um, well, does lots of interesting things about M. M is a hyperkähler manifold. Let me say a few things about M. It's hyperkähler, so it has a metric, and it has three complex structures and three, uh, well, it has a whole family of complex structures and kähler forms. Um, and basically, if you know, and basically these theories of class S give you information about the metric, about the hyperkähler metric. And this will be the focus of the lectures by Andy Knightsky next week. So that's number seven. Yeah, so he will tell you about uh, basically counting BPS states can be done in these theories in some way. And they give you some information about the hyperkähler metric on this space. Now, the space M appeared in mathematics a long time ago by Hitchin. So Hitchin is the one who, it's also called the Hitchin moduli space. Maybe I should say one thing. So if you, with the complex structure J, this is not something complicated. It's just the space of, well, it is complicated, but it's the space of representations to SL2C from the fundamental group mod conjugation. So it's the character variety of the surface, of, of the Riemann surface. But okay, from this description, you cannot see the metric and the other and the hyperkähler structure. So this space will be, so some, it's, some of its mathematical properties will be studied in lecture series number six by Laura Shaposnik. Great. Um, okay, so okay, so what's another example? This one we're not going to see too much in these lectures, but I thought I would mention it. So there is also for d n equals four supersymmetry, oh yeah, super Yang Mills. So this is Yang Mills, but with more su more symmetries, more supersymmetries. Um, you can think of it. I mean, so one one aspect is Yang Mills with complex uh, Lie group like SL2C instead of SU2. Um, this comes, so all these theories came from the 6D20 theory. This also comes from 6D20 theory in some way. Kind of everything comes from that. Um, and it has some topological twists, which give you some other equations that um, I think we won't, won't be discussed in this lecture series, but you might see in other talks. So. These are the kapustin witten and waffa witten equations. Um, among others. And for low dimensional topology, this is relevant because of a conjecture by Witten in 2011, so based on physics. He says he um, says that the coefficients of the Jones polynomial count solutions to kapustin witten equations on something. 
Right, so this is somewhat related to, I mean, we saw the Jones polynomial coming up in Schwartz type theory um, as some path integral, but it also comes in a Witten type theory as counting some solutions to some partial differential equations. And mathematicians are trying to make sense of this conjecture and prove it in some cases. Right, so this is somewhat related to lecture number two, but okay, because, well, it involves the same thing. Um, actually, uh, Witten said a bit more. So in lecture number two, you've also seen the categorification, which was Hovano homology. And Witten also says that um, Hovano homology should come from counting um, solutions to something called the Hadish Witten equations. Okay, which are a five-dimensional extension of, um, well, it, they're kind of like a pust in Witten, but one dimension higher. And um, yes, one more thing. So these Waffa, Witten, and Kapustin Witten theories, um, if you reduce them to uh, two dimensions, you get back the Hitchin equations. So the moduli space M also can be, yeah, you can also get to it like in this way. It's related to these kind of equations. All right. Okay, so the final example is something in three dimensions. Uh, so there is a 3D N equals two theory. This comes from the 6D theory again, um, 60 to 0 theory. By the way, the 2, 0, it still counts supersymmetries, but in dimension 6, there are two kinds of supersymmetries, and there are two kinds of the first and 0. Well, yes, anyway, it counts um, both types. Um, yes, yeah, so, so basically, you write this theory on a 3 manifold times S1 times D2. And you get some um, three-dimensional theory. So to a three-manifold Y, uh, it should give some numbers. And these are, well, there's some invariants that were introduced by Gukov, uh, Putrov, and Wafa, and also another uh, paper by these three people and Dupé. Um, and yes, I guess we can call them invariants of three manifolds but they have no mathematical definition yet, except in some cases, like for plumbings. Um, but they are related to something we've seen before, namely the WRT invariants. So the WRT invariants of three manifolds um, make sense for Q equals e to pi over K, over k plus two, uh, so basically at roots of unity. You can extend them to roots of unity. I mean, these are the primitive roots, but you can also extend them to other roots of unity. But, um, yes, how should I say? So the GPV invariants are power series with integer coefficients and they converge for absolute value of Q less than one. So they converge in the unit disk. Um, and yes, and when you take the limits at, the, at certain roots of unity, you should get back the WRT invariance. So in principle, they study similar things to the WRT invariance, uh, but in a different sector. And what's important is they have Z coefficients. Um, so by the way, they count, they count I mean, they count BPS states in this theory. And this will be the focus of lecture number five by Pavel Putrov. Um, so even though there's no mathematical definition, you can 
say what they are based from physics in some class of examples, and you can study them. Um, the reason why, for example, I find them interesting is because also from physics, you can, you can, you can expect them to um, be able to categorify them. So there should be, um, should be, so. Oh yeah, by the way, they're called usually z hat a of q uh, and should be categorified. So, um, so this should give something like Kovano homology, some version of Kovano homology for three manifolds. Well, let me put it this way. So the Jones polynomial is a case of the WRT invariance for knots in R3. And um, well, um, in that case, it is a polynomial with integer coefficients, and it has a categorification, namely Hovano homology. But for three manifolds, people don't know how to extend Hovano homology to three manifolds. That's an open problem, mathematically. Uh, and the problem is that this is just defined at the roots of unity. But this invariance um, should have z coefficients, and therefore there's some hope of um, be them being the Euler characteristic of some theory. Okay, so I think that's what I had to say about this theory. Uh, questions? Yes. Could you say something more about uh, this procedure of going from, say, super young mills and then producing proof in Britain? No, that's a topological twist. Um, <laughs> maybe Max Zimmert will talk about it on Friday. I mean, I would have to tell you what the QFT is, and yes, and I, I'm not going to do that. Okay, other questions? Yes. You said two times that these are counting states. Which of those are conjectures? <coughs> well, quantum field theory is all kind of conjectural. Um, yes, I mean, yes, I mean the whole theory, uh, I mean mathematicians don't usually try to, I mean some mathematicians try to make it rigorous and they have some success, but um, in general, so people study the, the field theorists, the physicists, and then they get some equations and then mathematicians just study those differential equations. All right, so let me stop here. Let me remind you there's no problem session after this, but um, the